Hi guys, good morning. It's me and Sammy. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Lindsay and this is my 10 month old puppy. The last time I made a video following around my puppy, she was four months old, half this size, not fully potty trained, and yeah, she has just changed so much and we both have, so I wanted to do an updated version of this video and hopefully give you guys some tips if you are raising new puppies and honestly just give you guys that adorable puppy content that I get asked for because we all love her. Just look at her. She's so cute and she knows that she's on camera. Our usual morning schedule nowadays is to wake up around eight or nine, I'll get ready and then open her crate um, because she likes to sleep in. So it's easier for me to just like do my makeup. Thank you. And then take her out of her crate and she slowly exits on her own time and then wants to cuddle. Now it is time for our morning walk. I usually would say that we go for about 30 to 40 minutes. I'll probably listen to a podcast so that I can like tell how long we've been out and I'll do just like different laps around the neighborhood. Um, I did wanna show you guys her two different harnesses because she has changed through I think three or four harnesses since our last video because she's been growing. This one is from Wild One and I also have the matching leash. But then this is the one that she has been wearing lately. It is from the brand Awu and I just really love their brand ethics. Everything is like sustainable and recycled brass and I also just really like the look of it. So I've been using this one lately but it only recently started fitting her. Um, she didn't fit into this one for months that I had it and that's why I bought this one because it adjusts a little bit smaller and they do have an extra small so like if you have a small dog this is probably the way to go Now I am feeding her and she likes to sit on the floor right here and stare at me until it is breakfast time. Not sure if any of you guys care or are curious what kind of food I feed my dog. I do a mixture of the puppy kibble that she was raised on that the vet recommended and then I do some fresh food mixed in so it's like 50-50. This is also the brand that the vet recommended. It's just food for dogs. I actually ordered a different like popular online brand of fresh food that I kept getting advertised but my vet actually said to return it and that she really didn't recommend it. So listen to your vet is my biggest advice and don't just like buy what looks cool or like I don't know, well advertised. I also feed her in her crate now, which I learned from her week of training on crating and separation anxiety since that has been our biggest struggle for sure. And I will talk more about like all of my tips and advice and things that I've learned in the last six months of having her, but that is definitely something that is huge that we do now. While she's eating, I make my own breakfast and my latte, and my friend Caroline is coming over in about 30 minutes to help me with my Squarespace site because I am currently rebranding it, and she is a full-time designer and one of my best friends, so I thought she could help me with it, and Squarespace is actually the sponsor of today's video. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for creating and hosting a beautiful online presence. For the past few years, I have been using Squarespace to host my portfolio website for my graphic design work to lure in new clients and tell people a little bit about myself, which is currently undergoing a revamp, so I'll show you guys that in a future video with them. What has stayed the same over the years is my appreciation for how easy Squarespace makes it to have a beautiful website. It's super easy to use. They have thousands of beautiful templates to choose from that are super interactive and customizable to your liking. I have taken many classes on web design and honestly, Squarespace is the way to go. It is so much easier. It's a lot more intuitive and they have 24 seven customer service as well. So if you ever get lost, you have people to talk to, you are not on your own. There are truly endless options for what you can do with your Squarespace website. You can have a custom domain. You 
You can gather donations, host an online store, have a blog with commenting features, as well as integrating your social posts into your website through different widgets. For example, you can have your blog posts automatically pushed to your socials from your website and also have your social posts automatically feed to your website as well. They also offer super in-depth analytics so you can know what your visitors are interacting with the most on your site, where they're located, and other important demographics. If you are looking to create a website anytime soon, look no further. Check out Squarespace. And if you go to squarespace.com slash lindsayrem, you can actually get 10% percent off your first purchase of a website or domain. Checking back in, it is about 6 p.m. now. Sammy has been asleep for maybe an hour. After Caroline left, I took her for a walk and then she was just like ready to go to sleep again. While she's still napping, I figured I would come here and give you some of my favorite tips and things that I've learned in the last six months because a lot has changed and thankfully so because it's been very difficult raising a puppy, especially alone. My first piece of advice is honestly to not do what I did. I found Sammy, if you didn't know, on Craigslist um, from someone that was surrendering a dog that they purchased from a breeder. And I basically just got really lucky that I wasn't scammed, that she is a healthy dog from a reputable breeder. It, that's pretty uncommon. There are a ton of scammers on there selling backyard bred dogs that are sick, that are way too young and probably overpriced and not the true breed mixes that they say they are. I definitely would recommend going to a rescue, going to a real organization. That way, if anything goes wrong, you can lean on them. You can always surrender the dog back to them and you're not just like completely stranded with this dog. I also have friends that have fostered before and the organizations have helped them pay for vet bills. And there are just a lot better ways of doing it than the way that I did it. I'm really glad that it worked out and she is healthy and a wonderful dog and in a great home now, but that is just not really something that I'm proud of. There also is like an overflow of dogs right now being surrendered because people got them during the pandemic and dogs are a lot of work. So definitely check out your organizations if you're looking for a dog. There are probably like so many in all of your areas. If you are getting a puppy, you are definitely going to spend way more than you expect. I'm talking hundreds more than you expect. Every vet visit I go to is anywhere from $90 to $250. Her first vet visit was like $400. Getting her spayed cost $500. It can cost uh, lower if you go somewhere that like does a lot of them or higher if there's complications or if they need to take out baby teeth because if they don't lose their baby teeth, you have to pay to get them extracted. Another thing to account for is things getting destroyed. So I've had to replace our coffee table get a new rug. I've had to buy at least four dog beds along with tons of dog toys, tennis balls, and so I've had to invest in like more expensive, more durable toys, but she still gets through those and it just, it really adds up and it's like not something you really think about. Collars and harnesses, I have gone through maybe like four just in terms of her growing and not being able to fit in them or like things being too loose and her slipping out of them. So I just had to buy quite a few to finally get some that would fit her. And I really love the ones I have now, but each of those were about $50. So. Those are not cheap. Grooming appointments, which is every six to eight weeks, she has to get her ears cleaned, hair cut, uh, nails trimmed, all of that. It comes out to about 65 to $70. And she is the smallest size on that list. So if you're getting like a full size golden doodle, you could be spending upwards to like $200 to groom your dog um, every like month and a half. I also pay monthly for pet insurance, which is completely optional, but I have a lot of friends that have had to pay a ton out of pocket for pet emergencies. And that is just something I wanted to have as a safety net, just in case, because puppies are super unpredictable. And honestly, I wish I got it sooner because all of the shots and the spay really add up. And I probably would have been able to use the pet insurance on those 
earlier on, but I think I got that at about like six months of age. A lot of houseplants are poisonous, so make sure you check what houseplants you have and if they're poisonous and if your dog can reach them. For the ones that they can't eat, I just tend to put them up really high and then like it's not an issue. But if you have a tall dog, that might be an issue. Just like, you know, be aware that they are curious. Keep every single old towel, every like ruined beach towel, every old set of towels that you wanted to throw away because you will need them. Puppies are so messy, so dirty, you will need those for when your dog comes home and has dirty paws or when they're sick in their bed or when they pee in your bed and you like need blankets and towels to bathe them. It's just like you will thank me later when you have that pile of just like clean old towels to use. For teething, Sammy really loved frozen carrots. I would just freeze like a whole big long carrot and that really helped with, you know, pain and bleeding from her teeth falling out. When she would want to chew on outlets or cords or things that I didn't want her to chew on, I sprayed them with a 50% apple cider vinegar and water mixture, which then just made her not want to get near it. And you can also buy those like bitter apple sprays. It works pretty well, but you do have to like constantly respray it. But eventually they'll just, you know, stop going towards those areas as they feel like teething on stuff less. Every method is not going to work for every dog, which I just cannot stress enough because I definitely compared myself and our progress to other dogs and just, you know, was so confused why these YouTube videos that work for everyone weren't working for me when honestly, dogs are individuals. They are very smart and they can be very stubborn, especially during adolescence. So like ages six months to a year, maybe even a little over that is when they really try and test you. And so do not be afraid to get a trainer. Um, it can be a little bit expensive, but hopefully it's something that you can invest in while they're young that will pay off for the rest of their life. I sent her away for one week of training to work on separation anxiety, and then I can text the trainer as well whenever I have questions, which has been so helpful. If you're in the LA area, I will definitely link my trainer below. She is a dog behaviorist and also force-free and positive reinforcement only, which was super important to me. If possible, I would avoid training your dog on potty pads if you don't have to. Sammy was given to me already trained on potty pads, and she was sick, she had a stomach parasite. So I had to keep her on the potty pads because we live on like a very public street. So given those situations, I couldn't have really done it any different, but it definitely made potty training take longer for us. It took until she was about six months old. And whenever she did have accidents, it was on stuff that looked like the potty pads. So like, kitchen mats and bath mats. And so now I really just try and like keep her out of my bathroom for that reason. Um, but in general now she is like very reliably potty trained. So it is possible. Lastly, a couple crate training tips. What has helped by far the most is just creating positive associations around the crate. So whether that is eating her meals in there, doing little tricks inside, like going in, sitting, going down, and then leaving when I tell her to, playing games in and around it, playing tug of war, throwing the ball inside when you're doing fetch, just getting her comfortable going in and out on her own time and learning that like it is a safe space and a happy space and not somewhere that she like gets locked in to go to bed, that it's just like, you know, somewhere she can hang out in and that she like wants to voluntarily be in. That's something that we work on every single day that has really, really helped. She is just someone that wants to be like at your side at all times and that's what makes it really hard hard for me leaving the house. She has separation anxiety. And so like she would start to hurt herself or get sick if I left her. And so we're just slowly building up that confidence of being alone. And hopefully I will be able to go to the grocery store or get coffee or go for a walk on my own with her in the crate. That is the goal. So maybe I'll check in in another six months, do one of these videos and let you know how that goes. My whole mantra this entire time of raising a puppy has been that 
progress is not linear and that things do not happen overnight. She is still so young and I am working very hard at it and practicing every day. So it'll happen. And in the meantime, I take her to daycare like one day a week, maybe two days a week because otherwise I can't leave my apartment. <laughs> it is now 6.30, so I am going to make some dinner, but I'm actually filming what I eat in a week this week. So I'll show you the finished meal, but if you want the details, you're gonna have to watch that video. So stay tuned for when it is up on my channel.